Okay. Hi, everyone who's here or joining later on um, in the recording. Thank you so much for being here today. This is um, our final episode in the 2024 winter webinar series. I cannot believe it. Um, it's been a really great season, and I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who's here today and also to everyone who's attended any of our webinars this year, either as an attendee or a presenter. Um, we've had some really great presentations and conversations, and that would not have been possible without you all. So thank you. Um, and yeah, so my name is Kenna Bell. I'm the Education and Outreach Coordinator for the Iowa Organic Association. And joining us today is Brianna Horsey. She is the Executive Director of the Sustainable Iowa Land Trust. And um, she's got a really great presentation today. She's going to go over some background about SILT and um, share some of the extensive work that they're doing to um, improve inclusive land access and build a more resilient food system across the state. So I really want to save the majority of the hour for her today. Um, but before I do that, I just wanted to mention that the Q&A is open. Um, you'll see it at the bottom of your screen. And I really encourage all of you throughout the duration of the presentation to um, type any of your questions or ideas or comments or other resources there. Um, and I'll be sharing those um, and kind of moderating a Q&A during the last few minutes today. So Brianna will have a chance to answer some of your questions. Um, and just want to emphasize there's really no silly questions. I know land access is a huge topic and it can get really complicated and confusing. So um, if you're thinking something someone else is too, and this is just a good space for us to all learn together. So please participate as you would like. Um, also wanted to mention that I'm recording this today and I'll be posting it on our IOA YouTube page. So along with all of our other webinars, it'll be available um, forever for free for the public. So um, I'll be sending out that link to each of you later today when it's ready, along with a super short survey. It just takes like five minutes um, and it's a space for you guys to um, put any more questions or comments you might have. And it's also really helpful for us as we continue planning our education outreach programming. Um, okay, and then the last thing, I just wanted to share a super brief overview of what we do here at the IOA for those of you who are maybe new. Um, can you see that okay? Yeah, yes. okay, sweet, thank you. Okay, so um, the Iowa Organic Association was founded in 2006. Um, we have a statewide presence and we are a community of farmers, gardeners, food farm businesses, advocates, researchers, and consumers who champion organic production and products. Our mission is to advance organic agriculture and food systems in Iowa, and we value ecosystem integrity, community and collaboration, and economic vitality. And we have many priorities and programs. So a big part of it is education and training. So of course, this webinar series is a part of that. But we also do college visits, field days, technical workshops. And we have many additional resources that we provide both online and in print. Um, we are in the planning stages of our field days and technical workshops for um, this summer. So keep your eye out for that on our website. Um, and other publications, we'll have those announced sometime in May. Um, and all of our webinars and much of our um, education and outreach programming is funded through the USDA's Risk Management Agency. Um, so through that, we're also available to provide technical support and other resources all across the state. So a big part of that right now is our partnership with TOP, which I'll talk more about on the next slide. Um, but we also conduct outreach, so we travel all across the state. This in also includes our social media, our website, e-news, and other online presence, so check that out if you haven't already. Um, and then, of course, we also communicate with our policy leaders about organic and about the benefits of supporting and providing policies and other resources for the organic community. And then the overall goal um, is to grow the organic community in Iowa and continue providing support for each other and just help grow this overall movement in the state today. 
Um, so lastly, as I mentioned, a big part of our technical support and outreach has been made possible through our partnership with the Transition to Organic Partnership Program. So um, that's allowed us to provide even more resources to the organic community. And our organic farm advisor, Susanna, is leading uh, much of that programming that includes our organic mentorship program um, and a few of the field days and technical workshops and other outreach as well. Um, so if you're interested in the organic mentorship program um, or just want to learn more about it, definitely reach out to Susanna. I have put her contact info here um, as well as mine. And then, of course, you'll find all that information and more on our website. All right. So that's enough for me. <laughs> um, like I said, I want to save the majority of the hour here for Brianna. So um, again, please feel free to type any questions or ideas or comments in that Q&A and we will um, save time at the end. And if I don't get to anything, feel free to reach out to me afterwards as well. Um, so yeah, thank you again for all of you who are here today or watching later. And um, especially thank you to Brianna um, for being here and um, I will go ahead and pass it along to you. Yeah, thank you, Kenna, for the welcome. And it's been just a pleasure working with you and the Iowa Organic Association um, to put together this presentation. I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, I'm flattered anytime I get the opportunity just to meet directly with farmers and landowners in Iowa to help Silt Connect. So I've been with Silt a little over a year now, the Sustainable Iowa Land Trust. And my background is in environmental science and organizational leadership. And so over the last year, I've really taken a deep dive into connecting with our partners and allies in the state, with landowners, visiting farms on the ground, and really just getting to know what farm what farming is in Iowa, what obstacles farmers face. And I'm really excited about the future right now because there's so much interest in creating solutions and addressing land access. We're seeing movement from across party lines to, su to support sustainability efforts in Iowa. So with that, um, I will jump right in. I have just a quick video to get us started here. Um, to share a little bit about SILT, and then um, I will start with my presentation from there. So with that, you know, I, I moved here from Texas, um, I'm, you know, almost 15 years ago now, I'm not from Iowa, and um, what drove me to pursue a career in the environmental science world and in agriculture was just really, you know, I was completely blind to the farming industry in Iowa, it was all new, and learning about the impact that we have on the environment um, with our food system and what the status of agriculture here is and being driven to make a difference. And so I was really inspired by the Sustainable Iowa Land Trust and how they can work with landowners, be a partner and a resource um, for farmers and landowners alike in addressing some of the land access issues that we have in Iowa. Um, SILT is a land trust and our, our model addresses land access permanently. Um, 
the founders came together. Uh, they had survived the last farm crisis, as many of you here attending, um, it, I'm sure, you know, have memories of and you saw it happen. Um, so we're looking at how we can address this in a local way um, with food systems that are grounded in community-based farms. The impact that we see, um, we're always thinking 100 years from now, what will Iowa look like and where are we going to grow our food? And what will land access be like? We see, we envision affordable land access for future generations, for those that may otherwise not have the opportunity to gain land access. Um, we, we feel an urgency to address this right now. And that's why we're moving rapidly to expand our mission because the amount of farmland that's being lost per day is astounding um, in Iowa. We see that even in communities that um, have the resources to grow food, they're not eating enough nutritious food in order to be healthy. Um, and then the industry is consolidating. We have all seen what has happened to farmland and how farms just keep continue to get bigger and bigger and the price of land continues to increase and make it unaffordable for um, a newer beginning food farmer. So there are, you know, a lot of aging landowners that are selling their land or passing it on to the next generation. And we know that new farmers want to have more choices um, outside of just conventional farming. And so uh, there's also a demand that we're seeing for organic food and for growing food that is grown locally. So our solution for landowners um, is to create a legacy of affordable, eco-friendly, community-based farms. Um, that there is an option for farm transfers to um, be able to pass on to the next generation. Um, it offers landowners a federal tax, dedu tax deduction and a state tax credit that they can utilize to offset some of the costs that may be associated with a decrease in the value of their land if an easement were to be placed on the land. Uh, this is Mary Ellen Miller. She's a legend. I'm sure many of you know her. Um, she donated one of the first silt farms, 40 acres, uh, back in 2015 when silt was just an idea at the time, when it was just starting. This is Lyle Luzum and his wife, Sue. Um, he was the last in his family to grow food on his farm, and his daughter didn't want to take over the farm, so he really only had two choices, he felt like. That was to sell to a row crop farmer or a developer up in the Decora area until he found silt, and him and Sue were inspired enough to donate their farm to silt, which we now have two wonderful farmers uh, managing the land, Carly and Ethan Zierke with Sweet Season Farm, um, who have created a very successful business. They are living in the house. Um, they're making improvements on the land every year and able to um, use the land as a source of income to support their farm dreams as well. Um, so on silt protected land, um, we, if there's a silt easement on the land, it reduces the value of that land by 40%. And so we're able to um, either rent the land to them at a low cost, or if someone else owns the land and has an easement on it, then they are able to purchase that land at a discount. And so our model, that is how we're addressing the price of land. Um, we offer on land that we own a lifetime lease, a long-term lease to farmers um, that they can exit at any time, but we can't. And so that's guaranteed at 20 years, which is the longest that the state will allow us at this time with the option to renew at the end of the lease. 
Um, they can purchase the buildings, the structures on the property. So basically they can buy the house on land that the trust owns and build equity in that home so that they'll have the decision making and you know whatever remodel what they want to do with the home, um, but we'll maintain the ownership of the land. And we do that with no interest, no down payment, and at a discount on the land lease as well. Oh, that picture's sideways, at least to me it is. Um, this is uh, the family that was on the Luzon farm previously, and um, that didn't get updated, but that's now Carly and Ethan, so. Um, this is Santos, and he's farming uh, the acreage that is in um, outside of Iowa City in Solon. He grew up in El Salvador and had all of the skills necessary to farm here. Um, he has, we just put a new roof on the hoop house out there. Um, he has chicken and sheep. He loves farming and is able to be on the land and really feels that like without silt, he probably wouldn't have the opportunity to purchase land in Iowa on his own. I'm going to cut to a video now that is going to talk about how you can own a silt farm if you're seeking farmland, how our model works and um, you know what options we have for farmers in Iowa. Are you looking to start your farming dream? Do you have some experience and a business plan? Then the Sustainable Iowa Land Trust has a farm for you. Everybody needs to eat, yet Iowans import nearly 90% of their food. There's opportunity in the heartland for food farmers. Silt is making farmland in Iowa affordable for anyone in the country who wants to grow fruits, vegetables, or meat in an eco-friendly way. We offer two kinds of opportunities to suit your needs. You can purchase land that costs about 40% less than the land around it. You own it, but silt protects it. That means once a year, we come to see you, look over the land, and make sure it's still in sustainable food farming. Or you can take over a silt farm, rent the land from us at a 40% discount. After a starter lease, you get to buy the house and build it yourself. No down payment, no interest. Need some security before investing in your farm? Silt offers the longest leases allowed by Iowa law, 20 years with auto renewal. Silt is locked in, but you're not. Giving you the freedom you need if life changes course on you. Your heirs can inherit this lease, so long as they keep farming. We'll buy the buildings back from you once your family no longer farms. Then start over with the next farmer for that land. Affordable long-term access to farming on some of the best soils in the world amid some of the nicest people in the world. See what's possible? Visit silt.org to learn more. Yeah, something that I want to touch on that I think is really important for the organic certification is that 20 year auto renewable lease. If you're, we know that farmers invest a lot in their land. If you're planting trees or if you are pursuing a certification, that's an investment um, that we, we want you to be able to pass on um, and not, you know, and know that someone's not going to come along and, you know, just pave over it. And so that's where the idea for this model came from. Um, we do have, um, so we have, I'll back up here a little bit. We covered two options that silt has to protect land. So the first is a silt easement. So if you're a landowner, you maintain all the rights to the land. Um, you can continue to live there or lease the property out, um, and that easement gets passed down with the deed of the property. So if you sell it, it's sold with the easement on the deed of the property. Um, what we mean by a monitoring visit is we just go out once a year. Um, we do require that all of our easement holders or our silt farmers are pursuing one of five third party certifications, the first being U USDA certified organic, um, can be certified naturally grown, um, food alliance approved, animal welfare approved, or certified biodynamic. 
And so with that, uh, you know, we would just be monitoring the property to ensure that it's not being degraded and that you are complying with, um, you know, with your farm plan and our sustainability efforts. The second option for protecting land is that we do take farm donations. And so when we own the land, then we lease it out directly. So with the model of the long-term lease, that's with land that Silt owns that we're able to lease to farmers directly. Um, so, you know, just in talking about the urgency and why Silt became was it is, it, what, what it is, is that we know that we have the capability to feed Iowa right here. Um, the circular cities model, which I'm about to jump into, um, has goals of circling 10 cities with 10 food farms in 10 years. And we feel that access to market around those cities within 50 miles is ideal. So that's what we're targeting. Um, here are some cities that we are looking at. Um, we now have Waterloo, Cedar Rapids, Iowa City, um, Des Moines, currently, and we're targeting Council Bluffs next. We do have technically like Decorah and Fairfield as smaller cities that we've already began to circle as well. So there's how you can envision these cities circled by food farms. The farms of the future as we envision them are economically, socially, and environmentally sustainable. This is a picture of Red Fern Farm down in Wapolo, um, Tom and Kathy down there. The most recent study done, um, case study down there, they were averaging $7,000 profit per acre per year. They've created a really successful business model there and shown that you can make money off of food farming if done correctly. How we are going to do it is fundraising um, and grant funded. Um, so recently received a $1.8 million grant to circle two additional cities and continue our work in Des Moines. So that's allowed us to span, expand into Waterloo and Cedar Rapids. And we've had the support of several generous donors over the years, the Donald C. Brace Foundation and um, the 11th Hour Project spearheaded us, uh, spearheaded Dubuque as well as um, Des Moines. Oh, and I didn't mention Dubuque is one of our circular cities as well. So we originally developed a timeline um, to be able to reach our goals by about 2032. So last year we underwent a major leadership transition and really took a year to establish our internal operations and procedures. Um, we had six new staff before that that had all started like within the past year or two. Um, but now we're seeing we have four projects in development with another four right behind it. So we've seen a major influx of interest and in silt easements in Iowa. And, you know, a lot of that can be credited to programs like the agriculture land easement, the ASAP ale, as well as um, the projection of funds to be included in the next farm bill, um, the Inflation Reduction Act funds. And so our investment plan is still pretty much on track, but we're, we've realized that some of these projects are not, you know, they really have to be the right fit for the landowner and for silt. We will protect that property in perpetuity. And so, you know, we're looking a hundred years from now, is this an ideal farm for us to be able to protect and to monitor and to ensure that it grows food? And the conversations take a long time um, with landowners. And so where we're at now is um, wrapping up a couple of final projects and, um, you know, kind of setting the goals for the future and what Circle Our Cities looks like. Uh, what we need from all of you is just to tell people about SILT. Um, 
if we can become known as a resource in Iowa and an ally to landowners that are seeking a solution, uh, we want to become a household name. And we really, you know, if we can develop the model here, well, we've developed a model that works, but if we can expand that across the state, um, I really feel like this model can be implemented in other states uh, in the Midwest. You know, there's no reason why it can't. And if you know someone that's interested in taking part of our Circle Our Cities campaign, then send them our way. Uh, we want to, we have more farmers than we do land currently. And so we want to expand so that we can provide that access. Um, you can follow our Facebook page, the Sustainable Iowa Land Trust, or visit silt.org for more information on that. And yeah, I think with that, I would love to open it up to the audience now and see if we can answer some of their questions. Thank you so much, Brianna. Thanks, Brianna. That's amazing. And it's so cool to see all of the work that you've already done just in this short time. Um, and especially those, those stories and photos you shared of farmers in the beginning. That was really cool to see. Um, so yeah, like you said, everyone feel free to um, start the conversation in the Q&A. Um, and while they're typing and thinking, I have something that came to mind as you were um, presenting. Um, so I've talked to some um, young farmers who maybe aren't quite ready to and like do something like a land trust quite yet, but are just looking for um, something on a lower level to start. Um, do you have any resources or anything that you would suggest for a young farmer in that situation? Yeah, I would definitely urge young farmers that don't have a business plan yet. They're not, you know, they, farming is hard and it takes a lot of years to develop um, a plan that is going to work for you and to make it a viable business. Um, so with our work in the cities that we're launching in right now, Des Moines, Cedar Rapids, and Waterloo, we've partnered with um, Feed Iowa First and Cedar Rapids, Global Greens in Des Moines, and with We Arose in Waterloo. And I would urge all beginning farmers to reach out to those local resources that can provide um, some starter experience and education so that they can get the hands-on experience, the trial and error out of the way and sort of a safe space um, that allows them to make mistakes and learn from them and some guidance with developing that business model and what can be successful in Iowa. Um, you know, I think one barrier that we've found many farmers in Iowa face, um, especially in the rural areas, is access to markets and just not knowing how to market themselves. And so uh, getting that experience before you jump into a land lease is definitely recommended. We have a farmer committee that selects our farmers and they're definitely, we require a certain number of years of experience to farm on silt farmland. And as well as a business plan. Um, and so we're looking for farmers that have already gone through kind of that starter process and are ready to take that next step. Um, and, you know, they need more land, they have a business model, um, they've learned how to farm in Iowa if they came from someone else, from somewhere else. So definitely. That all makes sense to start with the stepping stone and then move up from there. And thank you for all those resources. Um, Denise asked a question um, that might um, expand on one of the things you said. So you mentioned that you um, need people, farmers with some experience in a business model. Could you speak more on um, what level of experience you require? Uh, we're, we require three years of experience, uh, okay. but we have 
you know, as defined by the USDA, I think in our policy, that can be a beginning farmers between zero and 10 years of experience. And so we really look at the individual, what their experience is. Um, and, but yeah, I, I think three years of experience is enough to make it through a couple of growing seasons and have decided if this is really what you want to do because we're looking for long-term farmers we want um you know we want to see farmers invest in the land invest in in the home and make it make it theirs definitely um to go off of that into more specifics, Pavla is asking what kind of acreage people are mostly in need of right now. You mentioned a need for more land um, or what you've seen recently that people are requesting. Yes. Um, so I think, you know, we had a limit of that silt would only take parcels um, that were above 10 acres of farming. And one thing that we're finding is that there's a demand for smaller pieces of land for farmers. Mm -hmm. um, some farm farming, far, food farming operations don't take up a lot of space. Um, many farmers we know, they're farming on like an acre or two or up to five. And so demand for smaller pieces um, in targeting urban areas, we have um, ran into the barrier of the soil being contaminated um, really inside the urban areas. And so finding ways to find farms that are like close enough to market, but not um, in areas so close to the city where they're, um, where they have that problem. Definitely. So, somebody. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm wondering too, with, with people wanting smaller pieces of land, have you ever had a situation where two different families or two different groups of farmers would join together to um, share land together? Yeah, um, you know, we have like, for example, in Decorah, like Carly and Ethan have, um, they have people that come and graze on that property because it's over a hundred acres. Um, oh, wow. Our farm in Solon, we're currently seeking an additional farmer to come out and, you know, there's still plenty of space. And so partnership is definitely a model that will work on salt farms. Um, we have a farm in Atamwa that we're currently seeking a farmer for. They have, um, somebody on site that's caring for the trees and the property, but um, he is not able to expand his operation and he's willing to have someone else come out and do that. So we definitely, you know, that community model is, it's a value of ours and something that we support and promote. If we well, can share really resources, then yeah. Yeah, I know community and collaboration is a big part of resilient food systems, right? So that's that's really cool. Um, there, You may have mentioned this, but Dennis is asking if there's an update on the ALE for small acres. Yeah, so I'll share, Dennis, thanks for, um, I, I wanted to talk about ALE a little bit today too. So um, the NRCS has funds through the Inflation Reduction Act, um, ASAP AL, um, ALE being Agriculture Land Easement, where you can receive funds. So if so, if a landowner puts an easement on their property, it reduces the value of that land by forty percent, and we're seeing even in some cases now even more, um, which can be a good thing for the federal tax benefit and the state tax incentive because you know you get a, a larger tax benefit from that but with the ALE program um, what it is is it's an NRCS program and the landowner can apply they have to work with a land trust like the sustainable Iowa land trust or someone else approved and through the application process. And they are targeting land that is um, prime soils or like in uh, danger of being uh, developed, you know, to protect the land. And so through the application process, the landowner can be awarded funds. So we'll take the, um, 
the appraisal price before easement and then the appraisal after easement, um, the residual value in there, they'll pay the landowner 50% of that, um, which is a huge incentive for landowners that are using their land for, um, for income, or maybe a farmer that needs income now to grow their operation um, and reducing the land value isn't as important to them. So um, I, there, I don't think there's a minimum acreage and SILT has applied to be an eligible entity um, and has been, uh, we're awaiting our certification now, but we have several landowners interested in that and it is receiving support at the federal level to be included to include additional funds in the next farm bill. So we're really excited about the opportunity um, for landowners to be able to um, make up some of the loss of value in their land and to receive as, as a cash benefit. Definitely. Yeah, thank you for that question, Dennis. I did not know about that. So it's really good to know. Um, we also have a question. I know we talked about this a little bit yesterday, Brianna, but Denise is asking if there is any kind of a mentoring program through SILT that works with um, the newly placed farmers to help them through those first couple of years. So we we would um, we would recommend that our farmers work with PFI and our partner organizations. We don't have a mentoring program. Um, there's a lot of things we really wish that we could take on, but as a small organization, we just have to be really careful about mission drift and taking on too much. Um, so we would work with PFI to help place them with a mentor um, through their program and why recreate the wheel when it's already there. Exactly. Or, or another partner organization. Um, there are some other organizations and we would just help connect them with them. Awesome. Yeah, that makes more sense. Why extend beyond <laughs> the reasonable scope of SILT? Um, this is a bit of a shift, but um, there's a question on whether there's a lawyer or staff on retainer that helps work through those legal aspects that you were talking about. Um, well, SILT, we, ha we have our own personal lawyer, um, but landowners should have their have an attorney as well we can't give legal advice to a landowner and so they have to work directly with um, their own lawyer but we provide all the information that they would need to make an educated decision awesome good to know too um i'm excited about this question so we have one asking if silt does or could possibly in the future utilize um, the land trust model to support giving land back um, to Native nations? So something that we are exploring currently as a board and a staff is educating ourselves about um, Native populations of Iowa. Um, we are admittedly uh, we know that we don't have enough information and that we're not educated enough. And so we're currently preparing for like a full staff and board training um, on the native culture of Iowa and how we can be more involved with it. So it's something that is really um, present in our strategic planning for the future. We know that... Um, it, that we care about the land access that Native people have in Iowa, and we want to incorporate that in our model. We just don't exactly know how to quite yet. And so, you know, I think that education and uh, at the staff and board level is going to help us prepare a plan for that for the future. Definitely. Yeah, that's a good first step. And I do want to follow up on that too. I know I've seen some things on your website about um, the work that you do to address the historical trajectory of land access in Iowa as well, um, onward into like all historically marginalized communities for whom land access has been especially difficult and continues to be. Um, so I'm wondering if there are any um, additional resources um, that you are, are working on as well to improve 
land access. Yeah, we take that into consideration with our um, with our farmer selection model as well. We want to provide land access for those that historically have been underserved and not given the opportunity to be successful in Iowa. Mm -hmm. And um, you know that that can mean many different things. But with um, the increasing land access grant that we were just awarded and working with those sub grantees that I named Feed Iowa First, We Arose, and Global Greens out of Des Moines, they'll be hiring a full-time resource specialist that specifically will work with farmers to help them connect to the resources that they need to be successful. And so you know, that may mean like how to apply for a bank loan, how to apply for grants, um, how to develop a business plan. And, um, you know, I think that financially, like it, that is true, not just with land access, but being able to access loans for food farming. Uh, many of those people that have been marginalized in other ways also experience it. Um, with land access. And so we are addressing that with our partners as well as creating a program within SILT um, that prioritizes applicants that um, have faced barriers throughout time. That's good to know. And it sounds like it, um, adjacent to some of the mentorship um, needs that we've been talking about too and people have been asking about today. Um, I think, you know, in addition to the financial constraints, um, also just knowing how to go through those often bureaucratic processes is a huge barrier as well um, for people who didn't, you know, grow up in those processes and and knowing about them. So that's really cool to hear. And um, Denise also mentioned that um, as we were talking about mentorship outside opportunities, um, other really good resources for people who are interested are um, the Women Food and Agriculture Network, of course, and us, the IOA, um, things like our organic mentorship program as well. So um, it's cool to see the ways that we are and can continue to all work together. So thank you for that, Denise. Yeah, um, and we began creating, um, you know, with Stat with SILT being a young organization and with all new staff, um, a lot of our resources are still building. Uh, we have started our resource list for farmers that does include, um, you know, some of those people that uh, they can utilize in order to be successful. And so we're always open to learning about new organizations and what programs we have in the state uh, because it's you know, it's a lot to take on and we're still very much in the building process of developing that but we hope that um, our website can be a one stop for creating resources for farmers as well. Definitely yeah your website is very easy to navigate and has so many resources so if any of you have not looked at SILT's website definitely do that. Yeah, and um, it's changing daily. We're adding, yeah. you know, every week we think of something that we need to add to it or, or change. So if you haven't been recently, yes, thanks for that prompt to encourage you to attend. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's a couple more technical questions here too. So um, you talked about the 20 year um, lease limit. Is there an option to renew that um, or can SILT renew that afterwards or? What does that yeah, it, so it auto renews. We just, uh, you know, we assume uh, and work with the landowner to renew that at the end of the 20 years. And it can be passed down to the next generation if uh, mom and dad want to retire and pass it down um, to their kids or grandchildren that want to take over. Uh, we would just transfer the lease. Definitely. Thank you. And I will, um, you know, as part of the long term lease, uh, the farmer, the tenant is able to uh, build equity in the property I mentioned. Uh, we will buy that back from them when they exit the lease. And so if they've accumulated um, equity throughout, you know, that's also, you know, that inheritance can be passed down as well. 
Right. Good to know. Um, we have another really good question here. So um, asking about, you know, there's so many food, des food deserts in um, small rural Iowa communities. Um, so I'm wondering if you could speak a little more on the efforts you're doing there. Um, I know the Circle Our Cities campaign at this point is more focused on those bigger cities, um, which is awesome. And so wondering about those rural communities in addition. Yeah, we have several silt farms in rural communities and, um, you know, access to markets is, is a barrier that we face. Um, we, you know, our circle, our cities model doesn't exclude rural farms. And right, so right. we just have, um, our efforts with circle, our cities is to be able to supply, um, local food to the urban populations because there are food deserts in Des Moines, Iowa. There are food deserts in Waterloo and in Cedar Rapids where nutritional food isn't available um, in those communities. And so uh, we don't exclude food deserts to just being in rural areas. I know that that's a barrier as well, but um, you know, with, with our Circle Our Cities model, the focus is to be able to feed more people with fresh food, um, with farms that uh, where food doesn't, doesn't have to be imported. I do agree that they have more access to organic foods, but maybe not at, a, um, at an affordable cost, like a farmer's market that's local. Um, but yes, yeah, Silt still has a, a goal of providing food farms to our rural areas as well. And that's where most of our farms are currently. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. I mean, there's need everywhere, right? So it's cool that you're working in those rural areas as well too, though. Um, this is kind of a look into the future. So Dennis is asking um, if we've successfully navigated the easement process with silt and ALE, um, then what? What do the next next steps look like? Um, so then the landowner would have a silt easement on their property, and they could that easement gets passed down with the deed of the property. So it just restricts the use of the land. Um, what a silt easement does is say that this land is for growing food, and it can't be developed or degraded. Um, with um, farming methods that would damage the soil or um, water quality in the region. And so um, the end result with silt and ale is a silt easement. And, um, you know, that I, the monitoring process I mentioned, we would just visit once a year. Uh, we would work with whoever's farming the land to evaluate their farm plan and ensure that they're pursuing an organic certification um, or one of the other certifications that are recommended. Got it. And then hopefully they would grow lots of food, support their local markets, uh, <laughs> make friends with their neighbors. And we, we do like to host events on our silt own farms and our easement farms to help promote them. Um, we keep a close relationship with those people. We can use our social media platform to help you be successful or our networks to connect people in Iowa uh, with the resources that they need. And we do anything that we can to help them be successful. And then, you know, that, that land could also be sold with a silt easement on it. And then it can be sold at a discount to a food farmer. That's awesome. I love the the community aspect that you're talking about. Um, just focusing on that is so important. So um, this is a bit of a shift, but I've been wondering this too. So you you mentioned um, the five certifications, one of five required. Um, do you know how many of uh, your farms and farmers you're working right now are certified organic? Um, I don't. I, I don't know the exact number, but I think it's about five or six. We have 14 farms under silt. Okay. So. There awesome. are some that are still transitioning. And so 
Uh, we give a couple of years of a grace period um, to start the process of pursuing that. Okay, cool. And then um, a follow-up question here. Um, are any of Silt farm, Silt's farms um, situated to be farmed as grain farms or dairy farms? So, you know, it, d it depends on the land, but I think that yeah, we already have one being farmed as grain and uh, we don't have any dairy farms currently, but, um, you know, if the land, if it's sustainable and if it fits the model, we really take the approach of looking at like, what does the land want to grow? Does the land, is it suited for grazing? Is it suited for produce? Um, is it suited for chestnut trees? And if that's what fits, then, um, you know, that can be a consideration. Cool. That's good to know. Yeah. Um, I was wondering that too, like the types of farms that you're working with right now. Um, yeah. So we have currently, we have quite a few farms in produce. We have a couple of farms that are in chestnuts, which there's a growing demand for chestnuts. And I think um, many of the prime soils for that are in Iowa. Uh, we have a couple of grazing operations and uh, we have one in grain. Uh, so yeah, there's a wide variety of what can be done on silt land. Lots of chickens, some goats. Awesome. And we really it. encourage <laughs> diversity on our farms. I, I, there's nothing more satisfying than visiting a small family farm. They have you know, a hoop house and um, they have their cattle grazing and then they have their produce fields and it's just really inspiring. And I think that it's um, something that a model that really can improve our communities. And it's also aesthetically pleasing. Um, there's data to back up that um, that's a way that a silt easement, though it reduces the value of the land, that that value can be increased with, um, you know, the aesthetic appeal of it within our communities. Of course. And yeah, unfortunately, we live in a world of money, but value is so much more than that. And um, yeah, it's really cool to see that picture of Red Firm Farm was gorgeous. I want to go there. <laughs> um, so this well, we'll is probably of... have a silt event out there this year. Oh, yeah. um, we have our small farm summers program um, where we will go out and have a cooking demonstration, meet the farmer, learn about their operation. You can find all of that on our social media when it's announced. Um, we're putting those events together for this year. Uh, we also have a solstice party out in Fairfield, where we'll share about silt and what they have going on in that community. They've been really progressive and protecting land um, for growing food in that region. Uh, we will have a silt fest in Des Moines this fall. Um, so a big party to celebrate and um, network with like-minded individuals, but we really just enjoy being outside on the farm as much as we can when the weather is nice. Awesome. I did not know about the solstice party. I'll have to check that out. Um, so I know you have to go in a couple minutes, but um, I want to ask my big question. So <laughs> you've talked a little bit about, you know, thinking ahead a hundred years and just the long-term vision of sustainability um, that SILT is working towards. Could you talk a little bit more, like paint a picture of what you hope to see in maybe 10, 20 years um, across Iowa within, you know, sustainable farming. Um, that could include also some of the things we talked about with land back initiatives and increasing land access for um, Iowa's most underserved communities and all of those aspects. So my vision of what Iowa will be in 20 years, um, one thing I've found over the last year is that there are a lot of conversations and happening and a lot of efforts in different parts of the state regarding where food's going to be grown and land access. Um, so 
you know, I, I, my vision is that like we can centralize that to multiply our action and be more resourceful in the way that we're approaching it. In 20 years, um, I would hope that we would have circled our cities with at least 10 food farms and have other farms placed strategically throughout the state that ensures that land is going to be accessible for any food farmer that wants to grow food. We have the best soil here in our state. Um, we have the resources to be successful with programs uh, like yours um, to guide farmers um, in their efforts. And I believe that if there are farmers that want to grow food, they should have access to land. You know, it just, it, it supports our communities. It reduces the distance that food has to travel. It reduces our carbon footprint for importing. It makes us healthier. And if we can get something locally grown, and if there are farmers willing to do the hard work of, um, of, of farming the food for us close enough that we can have access to it, that, that's my vision. Um, I think that we have all of the networks in place, we've created the model, and we are going to see some exponential growth um, around it. I, I think in 20 years that I hope we'll be working with other land trusts and other states to expand our model throughout the Midwest. I think we're the future of population growth and of uh, food security for the United States and that we can be a leader here in Iowa with strategically placing farms around our state to support our food needs. I love it. I think it's all possible. And um, yeah, just thank you again for all the work you're doing with SILT. And it was so cool to get to learn more about um, all of your projects and resources. And I hope everyone who's here today or watching later um, feels the same way. And thank you all for um, all of your amazing questions. This was, there were so many, and I hope I didn't um, miss any of you, but like I said, feel free to reach out to me anytime um, and follow up and I'd be happy to help as I can. Well, Kenneth, thank you for giving me the opportunity to, um, to talk to your base today, um, to your supporters. Um, I see a lot of familiar faces out there. So thank you guys for joining in today and taking the time to learn, to grow, to be better and um, to help us spread our mission in this state. Um, like I said, what we need from our supporters is name recognition. We need people to know what the Sustainable Iowa Land Trust is, what we do and how we're a resource for landowners that want to do something different and support the next generation of farmers.